Hello everyone and welcome to the new video on my YouTube channel. This time we're going to see how to make multi-threaded API calls using request module and Python futures module. So without further ado, let's get the ball rolling. Just before we get started, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to use REST API that I used in one of my previous videos already. And this API basically contains information about all countries in the world. As always, I'm going to put the link into the description below. Okay, so the goal here is to get information about many countries in a concurrent manner. We will not do this sequentially, but as mentioned already, in a concurrent way. Okay, so let's actually start coding. We will need to import few module first. And I'm going to start obviously with concurrent futures. So I'm going to say from concurrent import futures and then let's see, we're going to need um, random and time modules as well. Okay, so let's say import random and time. And since I have a list of my countries that we will query from this API in a CSV file, I will import pandas to read this data in to, an, to a Python object. Okay, so I'm going to say import pandas as, as PD, obviously. Okay, so we are good to go. Um, let's actually start with defining our base URL. So the link to the API that we will query. Uh, let me uh, show you the website for a second. So this is actually the uh, website that we will query about uh, different country information. And on the left side here, you can see different API endpoints. And we will essentially call this name endpoint. So I have a list of countries, which we'll show you in a bit. And we'll query random countries from this list. And we'll do this in a concurrent manner. So um, you can see how we can speed up the process uh, of downloading different informations asynchronously. Okay, so let's get back to Visual Studio Code and I promise you to uh, show you this file. So let's list the catalog here and you can see we've got this country list, that CSV file. So let's actually cut this. You can see that we have here different countries We'll not query all of them. We don't want to overload the API. Uh, let's say we'll query 30 of them. Okay, so now that we see, not, now that we know what we'll query, let's actually define this base URL. And I think I've got this link copied somewhere. So I'm going to copy it from the second screen and it's going to be equal to this string. And now let's read in this um, country file. Uh, at the module level. We could write a function for that, but since this is a, a one-time thing, uh, let's just do it here. Okay, uh, I'm gonna call it country list, and I'm gonna use this read CSV method. And what was the name? I forgot already of this file, country list, obviously. Country list, we could copy that as well. Okay, let's now um, turn this, uh, since this is now a data frame object, pandas data frame object, I need to convert this to a list because later on when we, when we will be querying this API in a concurrent manner, we'll provide a list of uh, country names as an argument. Okay, so we can easily do that uh, with pandas using this, um, to list method. So I'm going to um, actually point to the uh, specific table here. And this table is called name because if we were, let's go down to the terminal. If we were to take a look at, at the first entry in this file, so this will be the header. So let's actually do that and let's see what comes. So this is the name, the header of our uh, column. and on this object, we're gonna run this to list method. Okay, so now that we have it, let's 
as the last thing, let's take some random countries out of this list. Okay, so we can use this random module to do that. I'm gonna use random and sample uh, function. So I'm gonna pass in our country list and say we want 20 random countries. Okay, that should do. Let me minimize this a bit. So we've got more space. We don't need this explorer. Okay, let's continue. Let's now define a function that will be able to call this API by country name. Okay, so I'm gonna call it get country and it's gonna take one parameter and it's gonna be name of the country of type string and say that we're gonna return some strings. I'm gonna add type annotations to these functions. And now we have base URL, right? But for each country, we will have a different resource indicator. So we need to modify this URL. So I'm gonna say URL and we can use these F strings uh, to do this. I'm gonna say base URL slash name because we are querying the name endpoint name endpoint portion of this API and we are going to provide this placeholder for country as well so I'm gonna put here name this way we will uniquely target each each country okay so we can wrap this piece of code in a try except block uh, so that's actually pretty useful so we can say resp quick there we go it looks like i haven't imported requests so i'm gonna do it down below here and actually this is the most important module of this uh, video so let's not forget this requests get we're gonna use the get method and obviously we're gonna pass our url so this will allow us to call the api and get the response from our server from the server and let's set timeout to two seconds as well since it's a good practice to set timeouts generally okay so uh, let's say accept exception as is so we're gonna catch any exceptions that occur and if that if there are any we're gonna return a string so I'm gonna say failed for this country so again the placeholder due to this catched exception so this will uh, store the exception catched caught okay so if we if the response is successful if we don't get any timeouts uh, we can what we'll do we'll basically open a file create a file on the disk and write the content of the response to that file so we'll have each file for each country that we'll be querying so I'm gonna say with open and I'm gonna provide uh, again the placeholder for our country and add the extension as well and we're gonna open it in write mode as f out f out and let's use write method and provide the string object of our response and we can access this attribute attribute like this create resp dot get text all right so it looks like we have it and now just we defined here that we're going to def uh, return a string so let's do that let's actually return name if we are successful we'll simply return the name of the country if not we'll get this string indicating indicating failures in our function okay so now that we have uh, a function that will be responsible for querying API we need to create a function that will allow us to make this concurrent request so let's call this get all countries and as I said it's gonna take a one param parameter to and let's call it country list and it's gonna be of type string and what uh, of type list obviously and we're gonna provide string objects uh, this list is going to store string objects so the names of our countries 
Okay, and let's say we're gonna return integer. So we'll count the number of countries that we will be querying and we will return the, the number of the last country. Okay, so now let's code a piece of code that will be responsible for making this concurrent request. So I'm gonna say with futures, Fretful executor, and we're going to use this class to create executor object. And now I'm going to define max workers argument. And this is basically a number of threads that will be run concurrently. So I'm going to define this to five. Since we are using this context manager, I'm going to define this as executor. And now actually let's start the load operation so already at this point when i finish the next line our code will be ready to make concurrent requests so i'm going to call it future to url and it's a common convention to do so so um, we need to create now uh, how many let's go back for a second and see we took 20 countries 20 random countries so we need to create 20 futures objects. So we can easily do that using this dictionary comprehension. So uh, let's check this out. Executor submit. Uh, I made a typo in here. Submit. And we're going to pass to the submit method our function and name of each country. So let me show you how we can do that. First, we are providing our function name. Secondly, the name of country, and we can grab each name of the country using this syntax name for name in country list, because this is the list of countries that we're gonna pass to this function. Okay, so already at this point, already at this point, this function will be able to make this concurrent request. So at the beginning, we will have five threads running, active, running, and once they are done, once we get the responses, in our case for these five countries, we'll get another five, and another five, and so on, until we've reached the 20 number that we defined here. So we're gonna query 20 countries. Okay, so let's, Let's finish this off. And we can actually, just for the sake of clarity, we can purpose, uh, we can print out this uh, future to URL object. So we can see which threads are uh, active and which are not. And um, I will show you later how we can grab the content of, the, of this function, of this get country function. Uh, say if we wanted to uh, get the, the return val value of this function. So in our case, it would be the name of the country. We'd have to add another piece of code, but let's actually leave this at that and we'll uh, add this later. Okay, so uh, we could actually measure the execution time of our function. So um, I'm gonna say TO time perf counter so this will allow us to measure the uh, the time and now we're gonna execute our functions and remember this takes in a list of countries so we have it here at the module level so we can pass this in directly and now we just need elapsed time so I'm gonna measure the time again after the function execution and simply I'm gonna subtract TO from the new value. So we can add a print statement saying execution took and we can print this elapsed here like this seconds using F strings again. So it looks like we are covered here. So let's actually run this piece of code in our terminal. So I'm gonna clear this and let's make sure that we have our script here. There we go. And I'm gonna say python3 multi-request.py. So 
let's check this out. All right, so we can see uh, this feature object. Uh, so as you can see here, we have the first five future objects should be running, and that's correct. Running, 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 and the other ones are ending. So, uh, and we can now list the content of this directory. So we can see that we have all these files with country names, and it just took four seconds. So if we did this sequentially, it would take much longer. So if we were to print the content of some files, you can see that we have some list of values here. Um, we could obviously, we could get all information at once for all countries, but that's not the point. I just wanted to show you that uh, we can do this in the concurrent manner if there is an if there is a need for that. Okay, so I told you that I'm gonna show you how we can uh, get the res return value of our function. So let's actually do that. We can uh, we can remove all these txt files from our di directory here and let's finish this off. So um, to get the return value of our function, we need to, uh, we need to use another method from futures uh, module. So I'm gonna say for count uh, and future in enumerate, and I'm gonna use this built-in function to get the counter of each country. So I'm gonna say futures, and this is the uh, this is the method, and this is as completed. So this will allow us to get the return value of our um, functions here. And what we need to pass here is this future object. So it stores, remember, it stores 20 future objects, and this way we'll be able to get the return value for each one of them. So let's pass this in, and I'm gonna start counting at one. So I'm gonna start our counter at one. Now we can simply grab the return value of this function saying something like, uh, let's call it res and equals future, and we're gonna grab the result using this result method on our future object. So I hope this makes sense. We are iterating over each future object, each completed future object, and we are using this result method on each future object to get the return value for our get country function. And now we can, let's say, we can print uh, the response. In addition to that, let's actually return the count value of our function. So I'm gonna say return count and we should be good to go. So let's actually down go down here to the terminal. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger and I'm gonna run our script again. So let's see what it gives us this time. As you can see, we get all these names printed out this time, and this is thanks to this future result method execution. So that would be it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please do not forget to hit the subscribe button. This way, you will help me reach out to more people. Thanks for your time. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.